Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I have a lesson for you today for Ripple by the Grateful Dead. This is one a lot of you have requested over the last few years. It's been almost 15, 20 years since I have learned this one, since I've played this one, but I'm excited to dust it off again for you. So I have this five-pager sheet music written up just for you to accompany this lesson. First page gives you the lyrics, everything you need to know to play it from beginning to end. Page two, I'll show you the strumming patterns, four different options, right? Starting very simple, working your way up in complexity. I'll also talk about the chord shapes and the chord progressions. Now on page three, four, and five, I'll show you some full written out tabs for the intro and verse progressions, right? These are gonna start with some of the basics, bass note strumming, and then move up to alternating bass note strumming, show you some hammer on stuff. And then by the time you get to the intro riff, which is written out in full on page five, a lot of these techniques are gonna be familiar to you already from everything I've already showed you. So you can uh, get that on over at my website, playsongnotes.com. Um, you can jump right to page five if you're a bit more savvy on the guitar. Likewise, you can skip ahead in this video if you wanna get right to that intro riff. Um, but otherwise, let's get into it. I will say I have a full beginning to end playthrough of the song available as a members only video. So thanks to all of you who are supporting me as membership. It goes a long way in supporting me and I really hope y'all are getting a lot out of the uh, members only videos, the backing track, all my practice sheet PDFs, right? The tips and techniques, the warm-up exercises, the music theory stuff. And then likewise, uh, you get a 50% off discount code on all the song sheet music arrangements that I have for sale, um, which are licensed on a different site to make sure the songwriters are getting their fair share. So you can get all the info on that over at playsongnotes.com. Just search for Ripple or type in 382. That's the lesson number, and you'll find out what you need. So let's get into this one. Enough talky talk, and I'll see you all on the other side. Let's go. All right, y'all, so let's quickly start this one off by looking at the chord shapes we're gonna need and the chord progressions that we'll use for this song. I just wanna give a quick once over of these because once we get into the strumming and eventually into the intro riff, you obviously have to have these things sort of under control, right? Chord-wise, this is uh, five different chords. We'll need a G, we'll need a C, we'll need a D, okay? These are all standard open chords, an A minor, and then an A major which we only need in the chorus at one different part. For the most part, it's the G, the C, and the D you're gonna need the most. And a quick tip on the G is I like to use my ring finger down here on the low E string. And the reason why is it makes going to the C very, very easy as a transition, okay? Uh, I have a whole separate lesson on G chord finger positions and when you should use a middle finger down here versus a ring finger. Um, and how that relates to a C chord or sometimes a C add nine and, and all that sort of thing. So check out that lesson if you wanna get more up to speed with this. But basically a G, a C, a D, an A minor, and an A major, okay? Now, chord progressions, right? How are we gonna use these chords throughout this song? So this chord, th this song basically has two different sections, um, progressions that is. It has an intro and a verse. They use the same 16 measure progression. And then the chorus is gonna be eight measures and the chorus is a lot shorter and it happens only a few different times, so it's not as much the, the most important part. Um, but really this intro and verse, um, it's just four beats per measure and on each measure we're gonna be on one chord, okay? So I have it typed out here. What this basically means is you'd play a measure of G, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, to C, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, right? Now, um, we're gonna keep this progression in mind as we move into strumming now, okay? So I have four different strumming patterns I'll show you, and they're gonna start at the most basic. If you're just starting off and you're getting used to the chords and the progression and everything, start off with this first one, and this is barely a progression. All it is is just doing a single down strum on the one count, right? So if we had our metronome on at 127 beats per minute, that would let us play along with the Grateful Dead's album version, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So even though it's a very simple strumming pattern, if you even call it a pattern, it is establishing this idea of being consistent with your timing, right? Keeping a steady tempo. Now, a quick thing I'll say about my chord sheet. If you look on page one, you see all the chords typed above the lyrics here. Every time you see a chord typed, that means you're gonna play that chord for one measure, okay? So for example, if we went through the verse uh, and we were to do, if my words did glow, one, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, to C, two, three, four, C, again, and C, two, three, four, to G, would you hear my G, two, three, four, G, come through the music. See, would you hold it near 
right to D, C, as if it were your own, and it's a hand-me-down. Okay, that's the simple thing I want to uh, convey to you, is you can do a simple strum, one strum per measure, and you can sort of keep time and play along with the, the recorded album version or play it by yourself if you want to. So that's one thing um, I'll talk about there as far as that simple, simple strumming pattern. And if you were to play that simple strumming pattern for the chorus, it would just be, you know, A minor, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D again. And then to G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, A major, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, G. Okay, so two measures of A minor, two measures of D, right? Simple strumming pattern. And then one measure of G, one measure of C, one measure of A major, one measure of D major. Pretty straightforward there, right? Now. Let's dial the strumming pattern up a little bit and get some more strums in there. Now, the way I would recommend doing this is getting used to a bass note strumming. And this is another concept. I have a video all about bass note strumming if you want to learn this technique. I think it's an essential acoustic guitar playing the technique especially. And the basic idea here is instead of always strumming all the strings, right, sometimes we're going to want to just strum the bass note of whatever chord we're on. So if it's a G, this is the bass note, okay? So we do a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. The C, okay? And you don't need to go crazy on that bass note. If anything, I would go kind of light on it, right? A nice brush. And what this does is, you know, you're basically doing four down strums in a row, but on the one and the three count, you're doing the bass note, maybe the bass two notes, it's okay if you get a couple in there. And on the two and the four, you're doing a strum, usually, you know, it could be all the strings or maybe the, the thinnest couple strings. And it just creates some nice, some difference, right? If you're going one, two, if you're kind of strumming like this all the time, it kind of sounds monotonous and not that interesting to the ear. But if you do, right, it kind of has a nice little swing or, Nice little bounce to it, you know? So, um, we're gonna look at that now. Now on page three of my PDF, my song sheet for this one, um, I have the entire verse tabbed out. So what I'm gonna do here is play through that verse um, using a sync, uh, th this single bass drum and then full strum. So bass strum, bass strum, right? So if you were to do that from beginning to end, it would sound like this. If my words did glow, with the gold of sunshine And my tunes were played on the harp Unstrung, would you hear my voice Come through the music Would you hold it near As if it were your own and then the chorus, if you wanted to do that, it would just basically be the same thing. Ripple in still water When there is no pebble tossed Nor wind to blow Reach out your hand Okay, so that's the simple bass note strum. Again, uh, it's helpful to practice this if you're getting used to the chord shapes the chord transitions and just memorizing the progression and really getting a feel for the song, right? Because as we dial up this complexity and work toward doing the full intro riff, it's only gonna get more difficult. So you really wanna have this lay of the land. Okay, from there, let's dial up the strumming a little bit. So the second pattern um, I have here, or the, or the next pattern really, is taking this down, this bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. And what it's doing is it's adding in an up strum on the two and and the four and counts, right? So and the trick here is your hand is already coming up, right? If you were just doing the down strums, my hand's going up anyway as I reset right for the next down strum. So all you're doing is kind of just getting a light strum, a light brush on those thinnest couple strings. And basically that would sound like this. Just I'll play like the first part of the verse, right? If my words did glow With the gold of sunshine Bass down, a 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 bass down, 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 down,
okay? This is a nice thing to be able to do just to fill things out. You don't need to do the upstrams, but they add a nice little touch. And the great thing about this pattern is it is perfectly suited for introducing this new concept we're gonna do now on alternating bass note strumming, okay? Now, um, the idea here is on our bass notes, the one in the three count, Instead of always playing the same bass note, what if we alternated between this bass note and say this bass note, right? On the G, G chord, the sixth string and the fourth string are gonna be what we're gonna alternate between, okay? We go to the C. Now the C, look what we're doing here. We're going from the fifth string to the sixth string with our ring finger. And when we go to the sixth string, this finger is just lightly touching the fifth string so that even if you play the fifth string, it's not making any noise because it's muted via the ring finger, okay? So. <laughs> Mess that up, right? Okay, fifth string to sixth string, right? Fifth string to sixth string, back to the G. Sixth string to fourth string. Now the thing about this is you might find yourself missing, like you meant, to, you meant to do six to four, but maybe you do six to five by accident or something. Keep your tempo. Missing the note, um, flubbing the notes a little bit, that's okay. But keeping the tempo is, you definitely wanna prioritize that because what it does is it keeps the groove going. If you're playing for yourself or for other people, the timing, the tempo is a really important part of music. Mistakes here and there, muffed notes here and there, it, they're not that big of a deal in the grand, grand scheme of things. So train yourself to keep going, okay? Now I have a tab at the bottom of page two of my song sheet here showing you a bass down, a bass down, a bass down up tab with alternating bass notes for each of the chords. So for the G, we have what I already showed you, right? For the C, you have two different options I show. One is you could go from the from the fifth string to the sixth string, okay? Or you could do fifth string to the fourth string. They both would sound like this. The, the fifth string to fourth string would be like, okay? And if you wanna get a little bit saucy, you can hammer on. requires a little bit of a practice to get the feel for it, right? And then the other C would be from fifth to sixth. And again, I'm muting that fifth string when I go down to the sixth string with the ring finger. Okay, and for the D, it's gonna be from fourth to fifth string. Okay, so that's alternating bass note. And if we were to do um, the first part of the verse like that, it would sound like this. If my words did glow with the gold of sunshine, then my tunes would play it on the harp unstrung. Would you hear my voice? Okay. A nice little way just to add some um, interestingness. And then the final strumming pattern here is a bass down, bass up, down, a bass down, bass up, down, a bass down, bass up, down, up. Okay, it's very similar to what I've showed you already as far as the principles. We're just gonna um, basically keep the front half of the four counts a little bit lighter, right? Just two, two plucks, right? Bass down, bass up, down. Keep your hand moving in a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and bass down, bass up down, a bass down, bass up down, a bass down, bass up down. Okay, it can be tricky to do this pattern with alternating bass notes with singing. And that's why I've showed you all these other patterns is they're all gonna be patterns that help you build up to this, okay? So um, this is one I like to do a lot, but sometimes I'll bleed between this one and then just the bass down, the bass down, the bass down, the bass down, okay? 
So these are the strumming patterns you want to have in mind. Now let's look at the intro riff, okay? So if you are just skipping here from the beginning of the video, um, I talk about some of these concepts as far as bass note strumming and uh, adding in these filler up strums and all these sort of things that are going to come in handy here, okay? So the intro, um, the intro riff uses the same chord progression as the verse. All we're going to do though is add these highlighted um, lead melody notes into things. Now here's what I want to say. In my tab here, these are all highlighted, meaning these are the, the parts you would hum. It matches the vocal melody, right? If my words did glow, that matches if my words did glow with the gold of sunshine. Okay. That's one thing to call out, is um, the highlighted notes match the vocal melody. The other thing is whenever I have a full chord, technically you can add an up strum there also, right? Okay, I don't have the up strums written out here only because that would make the page a lot busier. And I just wanna implore upon you, take the responsibility and freedom, like you can add these up strums. Wherever you see a down strum, you can add an up strum immediately after it. And then likewise, you can add filler strums wherever you want as well, okay? So I'm gonna go through this line by line here. Um, this can be tricky at first. Uh, let's focus on just the lead notes and we'll worry about adding in full strums later, okay? Um, so the first part is, Basically, our hand's gonna be in a G position, and we're just gonna go in the fifth string, second, second, third, open fourth string, third fret on the low e, on the low E string. Basically, see how this is basically this is all related to the G major chord. This fifth string note is our first note. We're gonna add on this C note on the fifth fret, or third third string of the fifth third fret of the fifth string. Okay, and then that next measure is just doing the alternating bass note that we already learned, right? Now this next part. So it's basically um, using these open second and third strings. Third string, open to the second fret on the third string. And then open on second and third. Okay, when we come to the C, we're just gonna pluck that third string, hammer on the fourth string, and do strums in between, and then go to the fifth string. Okay, so that first part again. Okay. Um, Again, think of this as you're gonna be mostly in the G and C positions. Most of these notes are coming from those chords or maybe you're hammering on like this second fret of the third string or the third fret of the, of the, of the fifth string. But otherwise, all these notes are kind of coming from those chords, right? And the first line, we're gonna pluck that fourth string, second fret, pluck it open, and then either hammer on, so. Or just do no hammer on in. Okay, and then we're gonna stay on the C. Okay, same idea there, is from open to second to open, right? Kind of already did already in a few different points. Back to the C. And we're on the fourth string, and then third string, strum, third, back to the G. Okay, now that might seem uh, a little bit weird. Let me play it slowly. So starting on the um, second line. So one, two, three, four. And that line ends with the same way this entire intro starts, okay? The third line is going to be more of the same, just like the first line. And then that third line is going to end with 2nd fret 4th string to open 3rd string, and then hammer it on there, right? So there's lots of this 2nd to open to 2nd, right? 
And then let's get to the last line and I'll play it all through slowly, right? The last line starts with the open B string. Okay, open B string, strum G, open to first to second. Okay, we're gonna be in the D position here, so use this finger on the second fret. Whoop. And then this last part is hammer on the fourth string of the C, hammer on the third string of the C, second fret. This last part is tricky with the C. This, this part right here, this last chord of the C is, because you're hammering on the second fret of the third string, but you want to keep your index finger there. So you're kind of keeping, you could have this finger in its C position for the root, you could have the high E string open, but you want to mute that fourth string. Then it comes back to the G. Let me play the whole thing slowly now and show you how these dots connect, all right? Last thing I'll say here is, uh, we'll rewind that if you need to watch that part again. I did it nice and slow. The way to level this up though, is to do what I just did, but add in the up strums and add in like any filler strums you want. As long as you're getting those lead melody notes in there, it, it can work. Keep your tempo and here's what that could sound like, okay? Bit more sloppy, a little bit more messy, but hopefully you get the idea that if you keep a steady tempo, you can add those filler strums in there. And after you practice this and get some grooves with it, and you or get some get some reps, and you stay in the groove, it really can take on a. It, it just can sound a bit more full, right? And it, you're not necessarily bound by this. Sometimes it's a long time between strums. Instead, I'm not necessarily super astute at this, but I'm just showing you it can be done by adding in filler strums as you please. Okay, so that's how you play the intro to Ripple by the Grateful Dead. Now, if you want to see a full playthrough of beginning to end, um, as I would naturally play this song, I have a members-only video on over at my website, playsongnotes.com. Um, check that out if you're interested, and thank you very much for watching. Once again, you can get this uh, sheet music at my website, playsongnotes.com. It's less than 382, and this is officially licensed, so the songwriters are getting their fair share. And um, yeah, get it, check it out, and uh, lots more at my website as well, playsongnotes.com. Thanks very much for watching, y'all, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye.